All right, guys, let's talk about draw. What's going on, guys? Gary here with the RAS Group, back with another video. Today, we're gonna to talk about draw. There's a lot of great training on all the fundamentals that are out there. I think your time can be best served spending it on three fundamentals entirely, which is grip, vision, draw. Why is draw the third most important fundamental, in my opinion? I believe a good draw sets the tone for a good grip and good vision coming out of the holster on target. So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what I'm looking for in my draw. I'm going to break down the stages of how I train myself to draw, how I teach students to draw, and hopefully this helps you. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so stage one of learning and diagnosing a draw stroke, right? The first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna know what my reaction time is off of a stimulus, which is what a shot timer is, right? So the way to do that and the way to gauge it is I can never get an accurate gauge just hitting the shot timer and then going to the holster, going to the holster, going to the holster. But what I can do is hit the shot timer, be presented out on target, and break a shot as soon as I register that that beep is happening, right? On average, I find most students to be about the 0.20 to 0.25 range. If you do this quite a bit, you can start getting lower, lower, and lower. And I want to say, I believe, um, like at the GM level, you're probably going to be about a 0.10, maybe even less. But the way to do this, you're going to do it five times. I'm going to do it three just to conserve ammo, but you're going to do it five times and find an average, right? If you have a bad one in there, keep it because that means on that particular run, that was your reaction time, right? So no gaming it, no cheating it, just do it raw. You're not trying to impress anybody. You're collecting data on your own ability. So I did that intro shot, the 0.83 shot at uh, five yards. So I'm gonna stay at five yards. And for all of the stages we're gonna talk about, you wanna make sure that you're finding your dot, right? Um, on, that, on that run right there, the, on my intro, I had a streak of red and I broke my shot, put me in the A zone. Um, that was me trying to, you know, push my ability go balls to the wall for all of these i'm going to be looking to have my dot and more specifically i'm looking for a settled sight picture just for the sake of understanding what kind of time lapses are occurring between each stage but we'll talk about that as we go through all right so five yards it's right about here and i'm going to start gun present on target as soon as i hear the beep i'm going to break my shot i'm going to do that three times Just kidding, I got load up ammo. And that is why you always condition check and press check before you begin a string of fire, just like you should before you go out your door. All right, so stage one, five yards. I'm gonna get to 15 feet right here, and I'm going to have my gun presented on target, trigger prepped, I'm going to hit the shot timer, build my grip, as soon as I register that beep, break the shot. Okay, that was a 0.18. Zero point one six and a zero point one eight. So we're averaging for me about a zero point one seven. Not so much concerned with where my hits are going. I'll show you guys my target at the end. Um, but that one hundred percent, I'm having my dot, have my trigger already prepped, breaking my shot, and now I kind of know what my reaction time is just going off of a stimulus, right? So now let's get into stage two. All right, guys, so stage two. So again, we're gonna be looking for that settled sight picture at five yards. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna, I was already out here presented. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it back in. And what I'm looking for is as I present out, I'm gonna find that dot, start prepping my trigger as I'm presenting out, and I'm gonna break that shot, right? So now I wanna find what my reaction time is, or I'm sorry, not my reaction time. I wanna find what my average time is for a few rounds of doing that, so. Zero point seven three, zero point five nine. That was a zero point six two. So I think we're looking at around a six oh six five um, for my rack for that not reaction time. Sorry, terminology matters. Not my reaction time, but the time it takes me to come from a compressed ready, find my dot, feel confident about having my dot in my vision, being aware of the dot, and breaking my shot into where I want it to go on the to, to the target. So that is stage two. Pretty simple. 
Do it five times, get your average, and then we're gonna go on to stage three. All right, guys. So, if you're at this part of the video, you either are just watching it all the way through because you're bored or uh, you're repping it through the steps at the range, whatever. As long as it helps you in some way, I'm happy. So, stage three. Going back to five yards, but I'm gonna step back a little bit just so you can see me as a whole. All right, so for this, we were just here, right? Coming from compressed ready. Now what I wanna do is I'm going to allow my, my grip to break but still maintain, maintain contact on my frame. I'm gonna drop it down to my belt line here, right? So my slide's still parallel to the ground and all I need to do now is get the gun up and out at the same time, find my dot and break my shot. That's what I'm gonna be looking to do. Why this is important is because that is probably the biggest amount of space you're covering in the in the span of your draw stroke, right? It is from the belt line up to the eye line. And it should not be something like this where you come up and go like that. It shouldn't be this. And it should sure as hell should not be this. Right? That is very inefficient. It's very unnatural. Instead, make it a straight line, right? So if I were to draw a straight line from where my holster is to where I present my gun at my eye line, there's my dot right there, right at the top of my window, every single time. Every single time. So that's what I'm looking to do. So instead of having to worry about finding the gun in open space, brake retention, all that stuff, first, we just wanna figure out the most efficient way to get from A to B, which is a straight line, always will be, all right? So five yards, I'm gonna do three reps of that, see what my average time is. Okay, seven, six. Eight, oh. Okay, and a seven, three. That one's still on the A zone, just on the right edge, and I know exactly why that happened. I kind of, I'm, I'm learning more about my grip right now, um, just going through classes myself, stuff like that. And I'm trying to play game, the game of like lessening tension in the in the uh, the dominant hand, and really applying a whole lot of pressure with the support hand. And I relaxed my hand a little bit too much. Still gave me an A zone hit at five yards, but it's noticeably shifted right from what my shots are trending, right? So, and that time again was a 7.3. So we're looking at probably around an average time of a, mm, probably a 7.9, 7.8, somewhere in there. So above that 6.5. All right, now we're gonna get into stage four and uh, this is where it's gonna start to feel probably a little bit more like an actual draw. All right guys, so stage four. Now we just came down from learning how to present that gun in the most efficient way possible in a straight line. So now I'm going to, just backing up again so you guys can see me. So now, instead of doing this, I'm going to allow this hand to seat the gun into the holster. Retention broken. I'm not seating the gun all the way, right? I'm breaking the retention and I'm holding the gun there. My support hand is going to come across my midline and stage in front of that holster. Now you can do here, you can do here. It's gonna be personal preference to an extent, but the, the goal is I wanna start getting this hand to where my hands need to meet in order to build that grip quickly, get the gun out quickly. Because the sooner we can build that grip, the sooner we're gonna present out and break a shot. That's why we don't wanna marry our grip up here if I can marry it here and go straight out with it. Does that make sense? So, where are we at? That's 20 feet. So, I'm going to stage here. I'm going to come out, I'm going to draw. My hands are gonna meet right here. Very similar to what we just did, right? So, step back so you can see. Right here, and it's gonna come out and Pretty close, right? And the sooner my hands can meet and start forming, the sooner I can build my grip and present on on target. So I'm gonna go back to five yards right here and let's see how we do. That was in an eight eight. I was in a 9-1. That was in an 8-4. So we're trending, and that's all in A zone, I believe. Let me check. Yep. So we're all in A zone still. Um, I could use a little bit of a harder target focus. Probably should have thrown a black paster up there for myself, but 
it is what it is. So everything's still in the A zone, and what I'm seeing is I, from here to here, I'm not losing a lot of time, right? And that makes sense. It's not a large distance to cover whether I am here or here. It's a small, it's a small addition in a step, right? It's not a lot of space to cover in addition to what we just did in stage three. So now we're getting into stage five, which is the full draw stroke. All right, guys, final stage. And this is um, usually where people struggle the most is this idea of locating the gun in open space, right? So doing a full draw stroke, holster seated, retention is not broken, hands, have, hands are not on the gun, we gotta get to it. How are we gonna do that? Perfect, I'm glad you asked. So, step back so you can see. So obviously this isn't how anybody actually walks around or how anybody really starts a match, right? It'd be kind of not a great competition if everybody was able to start with their hand already on the gun. It defeats the purpose of taking the reps of building a draw. So instead what I'm gonna do is this hand, my support is gonna stay right where it's at, right? This hand on the gun is just gonna come over to the outside of my holster and slide straight down here. Hands are below my holster, hands are below belt. I don't have to worry about anybody accusing me of cheating. Everything is here. Now, what I will say real quick as a point is a lot of people say that staging your body and your hands for a draw is cheating and it's not realistic. I beg to differ. In eight years of working law enforcement, I can tell you that anytime something starts to happen or you get an inkling or you're reading body language or you sense that something is about to elevate to that next level, you instinctually start moving your hands and positions to your tools, right? Everybody does it. Um, people that can still carry do it, right? If something starts getting weird, people instinctually start grabbing the bottom of their, their clothing or their garment. Cops, they feel like they're t telling somebody, show me your hands. They don't know if they have a gun or not. They instinctually start moving their hands to their holster. It's a natural thing. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to fight or resist. It's natural. So why not just do it, right? So as I bring my hands down. Now, as I move to the holster, this is where it's gonna get a little bit different. We have one more thing for this support hand to do. As my dominant hand starts moving to my holster, I'm going to move both hands in, a, in the same motion, right? I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna to try to marry these hands as low as possible here. You can see I just married it up here. If I can do it even lower, that's perfect. Right there, that is a good draw stroke in my opinion. Perfect. So now we're gonna put it all together, right? I showed you how to stage your hands. We gonna wanna move both hands in motion at the same time and we wanna get up on target. So let's do three reps of this and see where we're at. Again, I'm looking for that settled dot sight picture. I wanna at least see, maybe not so much settled. I wanna see like a solid streak of red, not a glow of red, not my window, not my housing. I want a, at most, I'm sorry, at best, I want a settled sight picture, and at least I want some sort of streaking sight picture. Okay, here we go. Okay, that was in a 9 7. That was in a 9 6. And that was a 9.5, overpowered my grip a little bit, pushed one Charlie slightly out of the A zone. So, yeah, we got a couple more rounds. I'm just going to redo that one, is what it is. So, reaction time, or I'm sorry, not reaction, the speed is good, but I want to correct my deficiencies as I find them, right? And I'll tell you right now, even being an instructor, being able to help, uh, I think some people get better with shooting, I still have my own things I'm working on. So, just me being transparent. So I'm gonna do it one more good rep. That okay, that was a little bit of a high Charlie and a 9.5. Let's clean it up, come on. There we go. And a 9.2, so, and that's still slightly left, probably I think just a little left of the Azer, it's hard to tell because I have a pasted up target, but, Either way, 9-2, um, I'll take it, especially seeing a streak of red real quick. I probably waited too long to break that shot because I saw the dot coming up from the bottom as I elevated the draw up. But that's stage five, right? And I'll show you, I'm gonna turn around and show you the target and uh, close out this video. All right, guys, so as you can see, this is my target from all of that shooting that we just did, all that demonstration. 
I do have three Charlies. I will actually go up and mark these for you right now. I'm sorry, nope, that's an Alpha, my bad. Charlie and Charlie. So one, two, three Charlies. Um, nothing went above a second though, right? And I think that's pretty important to acknowledge here is there's always this game of speed and accuracy that you're playing. And the more accurate you can be at different levels of applying speed, that's a sign of progress, right? Speed and accuracy are the basis of, uh, of efficiency. And it's what we're always looking to accomplish throughout our whole entire shooting journey is getting faster, more accurate. So when I have a target like this and I have majority alphas with a few Charlies and it's not like wild Charlies, like line break CD, that's when I would be a lot pretty concerned. Um, but a few Charlies mixed in with pushing a bunch of speed that nothing went above a second, I'm not too mad at that. And I believe it's a it's not only practical, I believe it's needed to sorry, I believe it's needed to practice a fast, efficient draw stroke. I think that it's underrated. I think a lot of people um, waste a lot of time on, on just the draw in itself, right? They have fast splits, they have fast sight acquisition, they have good focus, they have good vision. But as soon as we step back beyond seven yards for a draw, all of a sudden a fast draw that was like this turns into that, right? And that's a whole other video entirely where certain things never have to slow down no matter what distance you're at, whether it's one yard or a thousand yards. Um, certain manipulations should just always be fast. Um, I think this is like either the second or third video we've put out with like some sort of educational content about like what it is that I actually do. And I hope it helps you. I just wanna tell you guys, this will never be a replacement for good, for good in-person instruction. It never will be. Um, this can get you started, it can give you some ideas, it can get you over a hump to something that you've been battling as far as why is this just not working for me? But it's never gonna be the same as having a good reputable instructor next to you telling you what's going on, being able to see what you're doing and you being able to explain what you're feeling while you're doing it. That's a big part of it. Um, 100%, I would love for everybody to come train with Rask Group. I think that would be absolutely awesome. However, there are a boatload of great instructors out there. And if you're not in the Western New York area, I completely understand, no hard feelings. Go see those reputable instructors. All I care about is progression of good people. So do what you gotta do. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, throw it down in the comment section. If you think I'm slow as shit and this didn't help you, I apologize for wasting your time. Not really, because you paid nothing to watch this video. So until next time, guys, stay safe, stay trained, stay rad, and I'll be back with the next one. Oh, if you need anything to help you progress as far as gear, whether it be a shot timer, holsters, belts, gun parts, optics, lights, whatever, check out brownells.com, use code BOP10 at checkout, and tell them RAS Group sent you. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.